Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Brought to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through its company-owned Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the Singer and Red S trademarks on the storefront. Tonight, on Four Star Playhouse, we present Dick Powell in The Returning. Routine flight, routine. 300 planes going out on a bombing mission. 1,500 tons of explosive to be dropped on Tokyo. An X pattern of firebombs. Then we spread it from there. For 299 bombardiers on this strike, it was an impersonal job. Routine. I was the 300th. And for me, this was not routine. Pilot to navigator. Pilot to navigator. I'm still on 335. How about that change? Coming up, Don. Don? Yeah? Turn left, seven degrees, for a new heading of 328. Right. That's one thing you never have to worry about. What's that? Dave's navigation. That's the Ivy League, boy. They've got a way of turning out brains. Hey, Don, what's the matter with Avery? I don't know. You're closest to him. I wish I knew. It's bothering me. He's been out here a long time. Maybe it's beginning to tell. No, it's not that. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's not that. Hey, Phil. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. ETA on landfall in 22 minutes. I'll be ready. Pilot to crew. Pilot to crew. Do not acknowledge. ETA on landfall in 22 minutes. ETA on landfall in 22 minutes. Landfall in 22 minutes. Don't think about it. Try not to think. 22 minutes. You knew it was coming. For three years now, you knew it might happen like this. So shut up and quit thinking. We go in at 5,000 feet. The Pathfinders lay an X pattern with their firebombs. And we spread it from there. Yes, you're going to spread it from there. Not across a map, but across the face of a city too warm and heavy with life. Too well beloved. And no matter where the target's cross is drawn, you'll hang upon it. And the weight of the dying down there will be on you. Sometimes they say, in the end of things, there's a beginning. But not in this. The beginning here was once, and once only. Then, then, the face of the city, Tokyo. essays again? Oh, well, my creative writing project. I'm just finally getting through the papers. Oh, come up with anything worthwhile? Yes, I think there's one here that's exceptional. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's a poem. Unrhymed verse has rather an odd title to a bird storm-driven. Mind if I read a few lines? Not at all. All lost beyond returning lost. The shore gone and the wild sea under. Somewhere against the windless stars, I heard you cry. And as you fell, plunging pendulous down the wall of night, death for an instant, like the shadow of strengthless wings, touched my eyes. Mind if I take a look? Carrie, that's tell of far above and beyond anything I've ever had in a college lit class. It was written by a girl named Laura Trevor. Do you remember her? Laura Trevor? I can't place her. She obviously was in the class. Such a large one, but... It's funny, I can't remember. Why do you want to remember her? Oh, I don't know. 
I thought maybe I'd like to look her up. I have a feeling throughout the poem of someone who needs help of some kind. Oh, I know it's crazy, but this is poetry, pure poetry. And a wonderful talent. And it belongs to someone so obscure and unimpressive she was in my class without my even knowing it. May I offer you a suggestion, Philip? Forget about her. What do you mean? It's a little difficult to explain. Well, Carrie, go ahead. I'm rather obtuse at times. Well, in this university, we have a tendency to, to stand together and uh, build our own small island. That island of necessity is well defined and clearly drawn. As long as one does certain things and uh, refrains from doing certain others, one belongs. But if one chooses to leave the island, one does not come back. I gather, then, that the Trevor girl has lost favor with you islanders. Her father was a journalist, correspondent of the London Times. He married a Japanese. The girl is Eurasian. So what, Carrie? Racial intermarriage isn't unusual out here? Possibly not. But in this particular island, it's not acceptable. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're quite right. It is. It's, it's snobbery. But it's also a part of the social cement that holds this island together. Oh, I didn't make the rules. They were here when I came. But they are the rules that we play by. What you're really trying to say that they're also the rules I must play by. Well, you live on the island. But even without the marriage, Trevor would have washed himself out. How do you mean? He's just no good. And after his wife died, he got mixed up with a rather dubious set. Then followed a long process of drinking too much. And finally, he wound up in the slums of Asakusa with his daughter. I take it he's dead? Yes. What about the girl? Probably very like her father. Sensitive, intelligent, and no particular good. She's, uh, she's a taxi dancer at the Sakura Club. And yet, with all that, she found reason to come to this university. For special classes from time to time. She was never a regular student. I don't care how she came. Point is, something prompted her to come. Something made her want to take a course in the modern poets. And beyond all this, Carrie, there's the poem she's written. No matter who she is or what she is, the gift and the talent are there. You can't let a thing like that be choked out in the city's gutters. I'm afraid I can, Philip. The girl is no good. She doesn't belong. Now, you're putting me in the position of sounding very stuffy, and I hate it. It's all the same. For your own good, I suggest that you drop the whole matter. Are you speaking as Carrie Howard, private citizen, or as Dean Howard of the university? As Dean Howard, I'm afraid. One more thing, sir. We do not permit the girl to leave until closing hour. You remember, please? Yes, I remember. Now, uh, tell me, which one is Laura Trevor? The one there, lighting the cigarette. Thank you. Miss Trevor? Oh, there's the ticket. May we sit this one out? Cost you tickets either way. I have quite a few. Sit over there if you'd like. What would you like? The usual. Two of the usual, waiter. I, uh, I don't suppose you remember me. Should I? Oh, probably not. My name is Philip Avery. I'm an English instructor at St. Andrews. I think you were in my lit class a couple of quarters ago. I remember you, Mr. Avery. Don't tell me I flunked out. No, no, I uh, remember a creative writing project we had. Well, it, it's taken me quite some time to get through the papers, and I finally got to yours. I, I wanted to talk to you about it. Why? Because it's good. It's one of the finest things I've ever had from a student. I see. And you wanted my autograph, I suppose. Keep it, Mr. Avery. You bought dance tickets. Why didn't you use them? I came here to talk about this. Then I'm sorry, but I don't care to listen. Sit down. 
I'm a customer here, and I have tickets. Sit down. Sorry, That's Abigail. all right. As in all places, the customer here is always right. Look, I'd, uh, I'd like to be honest with you. I read your poem, tried to forget it, but I couldn't. I just had a feeling that someone with talent like yours should be doing something about it. I've come a great distance to find you. Now that I'm here... Now that you're here, you realize you made a mistake. And wish you knew how to get out of it. No, I don't... Uh... Tell me, Mr. Avery. What were you expecting? Some pale, introspective little poetess you could play Robert Browning to? I don't know what I expected. Or possibly an amorous adventure of some kind. Beginning on a fine intellectual plane, of course. Why don't you go home, Mr. Avery? Take your poem and go home. There's nothing sweet or idyllic about this. I'm exactly what you see. A cheap dancer in a cheap little club off the Ginza. That's funny. In the poem, I seemed to see someone else. Did you? Someone who was lonely and perhaps in a strange way very lost. One of the hurt people in life who could still cry with compassion about others. Something of a child, too, a kind of a bitter innocence. No, I wasn't looking for anything. It, uh, it's all there, naked for the world to see in your symbols and your use of images, the way you put them together. Get out of here. You said what you came for. Now get out. What about this? Keep it if you like. It means nothing to me. It doesn't mean anything to me either. I came here to find the girl behind the poem. I found her. They told me what to expect. They're right. There's five more you've set out. And now, the Singer Sewing Machine Company is proud to present the newest addition to the famous Singer family, the astonishing new Singer Automatic. Yes, the astonishing new Singer Automatic that does more than 101 different stitch variations completely automatically, as simply as it sews a smooth straight seam. The Singer Automatic, with the exciting new twin needle that sews two rows of stitches at once with two different color threads, as easily as it sews with a single thread. The Singer Automatic, the most versatile, most advanced of all sewing machines. An automatic swing needle, and with that famous Singer name behind it. The secret of the Singer Automatic is this. These neat, thin discs of black plastic. They're Singer's fabulous fashion discs. And a set of them comes with your machine, each marked with a picture of the type of stitch it produces. You merely select the one you want and slip it onto the pin at the front of your machine. Then, while you sit back and watch, your Singer automatic goes into action. And out of the needle comes row after row of the stitch you asked for. All perfect, all exactly spaced, completely automatically. Watch again. Now, this is the Singer Arrowhead fashion disc. Just slip it onto the pin, start your machine, and there you have it. Your machine does the work completely automatically. Now, see how the Singer Automatic does your practical work as well, like sewing on buttons and making buttonholes and overcasting seams. And, of course, it will do your straight stitching, too, with that same famous smooth Singer action. A double row of stitching? Mm -hmm, yes, it is. This is the exciting new twin needle that comes with your Singer Automatic. It lets you sew with two different color threads as easily as you sew with one. The astonishing new Singer Automatic is at your Singer Sewing Center now. To see how fabulous it is, how completely automatic, come in and try it yourself. The great new addition to the famous Singer family, the astonishing new Singer Automatic. As the weeks went by, I began spending more and more evenings in my study. Japan was moving closer to the Axis, and a wave of tension was mounting in Tokyo. The city was infested with a strange malignancy, and I was lonelier than I had ever been in my life. Come in. Mr. Avery. Hello, Miss Trevor. I... I wanted to talk to you. 
Seems to me we've played this scene before, slightly in reverse. Yes, and I'm sorry. Please believe me, I'm so sorry about what happened that night. Won't you sit down? What can I do for you? I... I don't know. Look, if you're at all bothered about what happened before, forget it. I'm not carrying any scars. But I am. Well, don't. Certainly not on my account. I don't know why I acted the way I did. You see, everything you saw in the poem about me was true. And no one had ever seen it before, except my father. He was... I can't tell you what he was, because to you he'd be nothing. A white man who married a Japanese, died, rejected by both his people and hers. But he was a good man, who loved good books and good music. And because in his poverty and shame he had nothing to give me, he built a world, a funny, bright, wonderful world for me to walk in. And when he was gone, and I was alone. I missed him so. Everything good made me remember him. So I turned against it. I made myself turn against everything he gave me. Because it hurt so much to remember. And then, finally I was getting hard enough to live. When you came in that night and brought everything back. That's... Perhaps that's why I acted the way I did. You brought all the old hurt and missing back again. I didn't want to come here, but I had to. You're the only one who... I understand. I'm glad you came. Then you're not angry? How could I be angry? Look, would you like to go somewhere or... No, I, I would better not. No. You'd only get into trouble. I know how your people felt here about my father and me. I didn't mean that. I was thinking about the war and how Tokyo has changed. Might it be good for you to be seen with a foreigner? And do you think I care about that? But maybe a little walk in the park? Oh, yes. Doesn't matter where. I'm just so very glad you're not angry with me. It really turned out to be quite a chain reaction. My uncle was a vestryman at St. Paul's. The rector there was a brother-in-law of the bishop who happened to be related to the uh, dean here at St. Andrews, who, oddly enough, wanted an English instructor. All the machinery began to work, and I found myself here. And it could so easily not have happened if just one of those cogs hadn't turned. But they all turned. I saw her again the next night and the next. We were like two persons in a new and wonderful world, discovering it together. But wherever we went and whatever we did, we seemed to end up each evening in the little park. Philip, all so wonderful and so crazy. <laughs> what is? Us, the way we were, up until a little while ago, complete strangers. You an American, I a Japanese, since I'm part there and I live here. An ocean and two continents between us. And yet... If you were me and I you, we couldn't be more alike, could we? <laughs> no, I guess we couldn't. If you say, Buck, Rachmaninoff. Blake and T.S. Eliot. Cats and sailing, and the city when it rains. And the same church, even. You know, I might have been a Buddhist. My mother was. My father was an Anglican. So, of course, I was, too. Look. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Laura. Do you have to go back there where you work? No. Well, it just so happens that most of my friends are in the newspaper business. I could get you a job if you were interested. Oh, now that I know you, I... I somehow just don't like you being there. May I get personal? How are you fixed for money? All right. Oh, now you'd say that whether you were or not. Look, I, I know you don't have much money, neither do I, but... Uh, well, what I'm trying to say... No. Is... No, I couldn't. I know how it sounds, and believe me, I don't mean it that way. It's just that I want you to get away from where you are. 
If taking the money bothers you, call it a loan. Lara, I just don't want you lonely and scared again. And I want you to be safe and not hurt anymore. Don't say anymore. Let's just be together and have fun. Keep each other from being lonely. That's enough, Philip. That's all we need. That's all I need. The Japanese summer faded into autumn, and late one September afternoon, Lara came to my apartment. Well, well, is this your surprise? Do you like it? Oh, yes. I've never seen you in a Japanese dress before. It's beautiful. You look like a little Japanese doll. Are you happy, little doll? Oh, yes, yes. Are you? More than I've ever been. This won't ever end, will it? Oh, why should it? Why should it ever end? The war? Oh, the war's in Europe. It won't be here. But what if it should? Well, we'll be together, that's all. We'll just be together and somehow we'll make out. Oh, Gary, Ames. Sorry, I didn't know you were in conference. We're not. We were waiting for you, Philip. I, uh, I hardly know how to start this. No, you've put us in a very awkward position. I see no reason to beat about the bush, Kerry. Let's uh, have it out. All right, Ames, let's have it out. You've seen it all about it. Last spring, Avery, Professor Howard gave you some pretty sound advice. It seems you've chosen to disregard. What are you talking about? That Eurasian girl, Laura Trevor. What about her? It seems that since last March, you've been associating with her quite, uh, how shall I say, quite uh, uh, constantly. And conspicuously. This quarter, you brought her as your guest to the house dinner. Well, what you're really trying to say that is, in your opinion, Miss Trevor doesn't quite come up to the social standards set by you islanders and your wives. Since you put it that way, yes. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you and your My wife... dear fellow, surely you're perceptive enough to realize that the whole thing is in rather bad taste. Bad taste? I'm sorry, Philip. I hoped it wouldn't come to this. But we both felt it was unwise for you to... To, well, what Kerry means to say is that we'd like you to end this uh, friendship at once. Yes. And if I don't? Then we should be obliged to accept your resignation. You have it. Philip? Mm hmm? What'll you do now? Well, that's easy. I have a couple of offers back in the States. You mean that you're going back? Yes. When? Right away. I've got to get set for the next quarter. Of course. Of course. Oh, darling, what's the matter? What are you crying about? You're going. And it's over. Everything's over now. It should be should have been over long ago before this happened to you. And I know it's right you should go. Only, I love you so much. Wait a minute. You didn't think I was going back to America to stay and leave you here. You didn't think that, did you? I, I, I'm only going back to make sure of a job and find us a place to live. As soon as that's done, I'll come back for you. Really? I've never said this, mainly because I didn't think it had to be said, but I don't ever want to be without you. The longest time in my life will be the next few weeks when I'm away from you. I'm coming back. We'll be married here and be together always. Philip, I'm so frightened. And I know what you're frightened of, but I won't listen. I love you. There's nothing else to be said. No. There isn't. Only... Only what? Don't be long. I won't. The voyage back to the United States was an agony of loneliness. But once I was home, the weeks went quickly. I got the university job, an associate professorship in the English department. After that, I spent a week looking for an apartment and finally found one, just a couple of blocks from the campus. 
Then I was ready to go back to Tokyo. I had booked passage on one of the Clipper flights. For the past month, I'd been living in a kind of a dream. I didn't know what was happening anywhere. All I knew, I was heading back. The fastest way possible. Morning. Morning. Hey, your flight's been canceled, Mr. Avery. Canceled? Well, can you book me on another runway? I'm sorry, sir, but nobody's traveling to Japan. What are you talking about? Do you mean you haven't heard? Heard what? The radio. I haven't listened to the radio in a month. I bet... What should I have heard? The Japs bombed Pearl Harbor this morning. All flights are canceled. We're at war, Mr. Avery. Well, I've got to get back. I've got to get back. I'm sorry, sir. But the only way you'll get to Japan is in the nose of a bomber. Pilot to Avery. Pilot to Avery. Avery on. Are you all right, Phil? Yeah, I'm all right. We're approaching target now. The marker is up ahead. I'm turning her over to you. Right. Over now. Beyond returning lost, the shore gone and the wild sea under, somewhere against the windless stars I heard you cry, and as you fell plunging pinionless down the wall of night, death for an instant, like the shadow of strengthless wings, touched my eyes. Arms away. Dick Powell will return in just a moment. Tonight's play was brought to you by the Singer Sewing Machine Company. Next week, your host will be Bristol Myers. When it comes to toothpaste, you want protection from decay and good taste. You get both in every tube of new formula Ipana toothpaste with WD-9. It destroys most bacteria with every single brushing. And the fresh, minty flavor of new Ipana beat all three other leading toothpastes for taste after nearly 4,000 taste tests. Get new Ipana and enjoy the best tasting way to fight decay. Ladies and gentlemen, we in Four Star Playhouse and all the members of the singer organization thank you for being with us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the play. And we hope you'll be with us again next week. Thank you and good night.